if I want to be more aggressive, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna pass, put my chest down and pass. But this is a very powerful way. Very powerful. Even even though I didn't grab the pants, it can still work. I prefer to grab the pants. Now, why is it so powerful? It's my hips turning. You see. So this is something that I want to make sure before we get into the the next situation. It's not just this with my knee. That won't work. If it works, I, okay. I don't know how it worked, but good good job. Good luck. I mean, great. Okay. It's my hips. Very powerful. Okay. Of course, I won't look away. I'm just saying. Okay. Here, very powerful. And then I can just stand up. And if he wants to stay, yeah, he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to change now, okay? So that's another way, it's a little more indirect uh, to, to look at the situation. Sometimes that's the best way. You know, even, even there's certain personalities that can clash, and you can use an indirect approach and persuade someone in a different way. Uh, in a fight, in, in many things in life, the indirect uh, route sometimes is the more efficient way. So if I want to get through this guy's guard, sometimes I change the guard and then I pass his guard. That's, that's all I really need to do is pass, pass their guard. If you're stubborn and want to deal with this guard, good, good, try it out, pressure, but that might be what my opponent is, is hoping I do. And it's very powerful because it's my hips turning, very powerful, okay? And I usually use it to stand up, back half step away, and then they have to change their guard, okay? So now we look at, um, oh, and another thing about that is some people will use this this knee shield, just to stall. I mean, they'll, they'll just be on the bottom for like, for maybe half the match. Just making you frustrated until you make one mistake. So if you take yourself out of their special area or th their game, it could be a good advantage for yourself. Okay, now we came to where, boom, I get here. Now we have open guard situation right here, okay? Now if someone sit up, sit up, we get this, okay? There's a lot of stuff today about defensive hips, offensive hips, new terms and new ideas. Now we have him sitting or him lying down versus me on my knees or me standing, okay? You, you can combine any, it could be knees to sit, it could be knees to back, it could be standing to back, or it could be standing to on the knees. There's ways to pass in all, all four of these situations. Technically speaking, the more that I'm up and the more he's down, the more of an advantage I have. If he's sitting and I'm on my knees, we're kind of close actually. Still I have ways to pass from this. I prefer to have him on his back. And there are some people that are very stingy. They're, it's very hard to knock them down on their back. Those people exist. We can look at a few strategies to deal with those people, okay? So face me now. So he's on his back. Let's say I avoid the knee shield, but now we're here, okay? So sit up now. Don't, 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 let, don't let them sit up for free. Don't let them sit up for free, okay? So train, train. It's right. I'm standing. Okay. What did I do wrong there? What did I do wrong? First of all, I leaned over and let him grab my gi. Second of all, he set, he set up like he should. You see now, the distance is closer. He has more of an advantage. I mean, I'm on top still, but I'm compromised right now. Okay, where he was before is better. Is better. Okay, so now frame, frame. it's good to just stay stingy in your posture whether the knees or feet keep this distance constant until they commit to a strong move which you did they'll get frustrated it's frustrating being on the bottom just you're rocking this guy back and he's not going anywhere okay it's very frustrating eventually someone to do something and take a chance they have to okay if I take a chance I could but I'm already in a better position I prefer to wait to see if they make a mistake it wasn't a mistake it was an opportunity that I took advantage of right now, okay so as long as we're up high away, <clears throat> we don't let someone grab, well, they're gonna grab, it's very easy to grab with the gi, okay? As long as they don't pull us down, they might pull us lower, but as long as they don't pull our head down, it's very hard to sweep me, it's very hard to arm lock me, it's very hard to do much against me, okay? So again, here, okay. So train.
So we're just having this drill right now where I'm just letting him reach. Um, he actually is, has good ability to off balance. He's a very good job, by the way. Okay, but I, I keep myself consistent. If I yield to that and fall to my shoulder, I'm gonna go over. And these are really good things you can do to build your balance and your ability to stay on top. And after this one goes some other ways of passing from the situation. Next. So talking about maybe standing versus my opponent, lying down. If that was the world, it's gonna be easier for me, okay? By the way, if it was a fight, an actual fight, that happens a lot because it's very dangerous for someone to sit up in a fight. They're gonna get punched. And when I fought in Japan, they would throw a knee to your face. That was illegal in Japan and when I fought in Pride. So you see that as kind of a stalemate. Now, if that happened to me in a fight, I'm on the guy, okay? I'll pass it. All these things that do apply. But they're kicking you. So it's, it's kind of a stalemate, actually, okay? So you don't see the two and the three too much in a fight. But in the sport of jiu-jitsu or grappling, you see it all the time because it is more effective to sit up and face your opponent, okay? So, and I, but I also just said the way you get better is by having uh, the weight versus the leverage and, and have the fight going on. So it doesn't really make sense, does it? You know? Well, what does it mean? What am I trying to say? Let's look at one more thing. Lie down. Let's see. All right. So, so train, 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 train. in the middle you see I was conscious he's moving very well by the way. he's actually off balance me pretty well okay but I was trying now not just to wait keep my distance and put my weight because now he has to move extra and when he moves extra I can find my little my little target there my little next approach okay so the first one was kind of a fair tale a fair tale it's good to not go over that's how you learn a technique you know, how you learn a punch or a kick or an arm lock, you do it to someone who's not resisting. Fine. Standing, he's down, it works. I prefer to grab two on one, not two on two, okay? That's so simple though. I pull them and I pass. But now we have the person's resisting and they're grabbing my leg, they're sitting up. We have to put my weight on them to stop them from doing that. But how we do that correctly is to make sure we're keeping our distance as much as possible, keeping them from moving as much as I can and still looking to get around their guard. And this is a whole idea, an approach I'm passing that I hope will make some sense to anyone. Now we're dealing with them with open guard, looking at yeah, posture, of course, is very important. Um, arm position is important, grips are important, okay? Uh, but also I touched on something that hopefully makes sense. When someone's lying down on their back, I call it, they're at a one. If someone's sitting, by the way, you, you could say low one, high one, uh, whatever, okay? This is a two. If someone's at a three on the knees, it could be low three, high three. And guess what four is on the feet? You could be low four, high four, okay? So if someone, if I have a match with someone, I want to keep them at a one or a two. I don't really want them being a three or a four. Uh, it's a general way to keep an advantage on the point. In this case, he's at a one. I want to keep him at a one. He sits up, he gets more of an advantage. I just saw last, the, the drill we were doing earlier, he was getting up pretty well, okay? I want to try and avoid that. If I'm at a three, uh, I can pass well from three, but I can also pass from a four. Uh, both are very important, three and four. Passing on the knees and passing on the feet are, are both very important. You want to have uh, passes from both situations, okay? So light on, brother, again. So now we see open guard here. I'll just, I'll just show, so this is a modified butterfly, whatever, whatever the case is, simple um, pass that you like. All right, so ready, train, go. <clears throat> Simple, fast, stand up, grab. Now, the even better way is to grab the pants. Okay, you can grab the ankle, grab the pants. Look, I know people are taught to grab both, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong to grab both. It's just that you need both legs to do it. Okay, I grab one, like that. All I do is grab one. Okay, and then you'd be surprised. It's, 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 a very, it's a very strong motion to pull someone and pass. Even without gi, I just grab the ankle, okay? That's great if you grab here, simple, okay? So someone's on the back, just a stand up, grab two, and just back up, okay? When I do it, I take this and I pass. I go down very quickly to 
close that space on my opponent. Okay? Let's go ahead and do it. That's standing. Okay? Alright, Trent. So he's, at, he's at a two. I'm going to one. Okay? I'm at a three. I'm at a, I'm at a three right now. Okay? I'm at a three. Okay, off balance. Good. Good job. Put me out full guard. This is how people usually start. That's why it's good to have some tactics from your heart training. So we're looking at options, okay? Because the reason I'm mentioning good, good stuff, very good. The reason I'm mentioning the height four versus three is kind of confusing. It actually is, is because people want I want to be at a four, him at a one. But you see what he did? He moved. He moved. So yes, it's awesome. I stand up, I grab leg. It's very hard to stop that pass. But what happens? They move. So while I'm saying. I want the four versus one. I want to be standing when he's on his back. What happens is he'll get close to me and pull me down, okay? So I think what's better for everyone here watching, myself included, my students, my friends, is to be realistic. Get yourself in that scrum, meaning the three and the two. Start there, okay? That's why at the beginning, I said we're gonna floor ourselves, keep a posture, um, it's a consistent, because that's what makes you better overall. If you look at a move where he lies there and doesn't do anything. I stand up, he lets him grab his leg. Yes, it works. If you can get up there, it does work. But the person is moving. Because of that, we have to use our advantage that we have on top, which is weight. I have to implement my weight on my opponent. My opponent on bottom has a leverage base advantage. He has two legs and two arms fighting my two arms. I know I have legs, but they're busy moving me, okay? So he has a leverage advantage, I have a weight advantage. I am also heavier, so I have, a, I have a mass advantage. But even if I was lighter than my opponent, me being on top gives me a weight-based advantage, if that makes sense to anyone, okay? So the way you get good at passing the guard is actually starting in this type of situation, implementing your weight on your opponent, and then seeing where it goes. Welcome back, good to be here with you guys. Uh, we're looking today at half guard. Um, actually, the way I pass half guard on top, we'll do top and bottom, a few options few different parts of my game. It's uh, usually is different than most people. I would never say better, but it's different. And because it's different, it can work pretty well. In my experience, because of my leg lock ability, or let's say the threat of me attacking the legs, people rarely put me in a very tight half guard because they're locked into my hips and it's, it's pretty much gonna be a submission uh, with my hand raised. So that threat right there makes people a little looser with their half guard, which makes it actually easier to pass the half guard. So we'll look at a few options today. One thing about the half guard that I've realized uh, of the main uh, positions, mount, cross side, half, half guard, of course, north, south, whatever, uh, whatever, any of these situations, it is the most advanced uh, one movement from half guard, the bottom man or girl can get the back, one movement from the top can be the back, one movement can be the mount, one movement's a sweep, one movement's an arm lock, one movement's a leg lock, one movement is anything you can imagine. It can be a stand-up. One movement away from every other position, basically. So in that way, it can be the most confusing. I suggest when people are learning half guard that they stick to their favorite side, which seems, why would I say that? You, know, you have a hole in your game. If you, if you try to become the jack of all trades too soon and try to be a per perfect you know, here and there, it usually takes away from your ability to learn and have a cohesive style. So eventually you want to have both sides down, but half guard is so open and so diverse, you want to, in my opinion, pick your favorite side and get that down first, okay? Brother, can you light on? Half guard, I'll pick my favorite side, okay? You know, it seems to be this way. Uh, if you're right-handed, you usually pass to the left. Almost always the case for some reason. So if you actually want to develop the other side, it could be kind of smart because this person usually doesn't uh, defend, or your opponent doesn't defend the other way usually. Most people are used to this this passing, this side, okay? But let's stay with this idea. Let's go back. 
I have many, many options. Let's we call this, of course, Z guard or shallow or um, knee shield. As many you know, people are just changing the names every year for these kind of positions. Okay, we can look at this. It's actually easier to pass this. And there's a few people that are that have very good submissions from here, but it's very rare. Okay, we also have deeper in that guard, which for me I have a lot more attacks, and I don't want my opponent to have this position. But we will look at this. Okay, so if we were to imagine. Someone standing versus someone on the knees like me, or someone sitting up, uh, sitting down, or lying down. Okay, if he sits up to his elbow, I really don't want that happening because he's he's closing that distance between my level of of, of being on my knees. Okay, I want to kind of push him down. It's okay to grab with, with the the collar. I, I I don't try to show too many things that are purely reliant upon the gi. It's just not my style. Although I like the gi, I don't, I don't rely upon it. Okay, so I'll grab it if it's there. And of course, there's some great collar chokes and great options. Most things I do use the gi, but I don't rely upon the gi, okay? So we see now my opponent, we're gonna go grab like this fine, just to put him down, okay? Now, if I grab the head, it's fine. It's, we'll, we'll look at ways we can turn the jaw with our shoulder. It's great, we can do that. But realize that someone is let's say very strong, sometimes maybe they're a lot bigger than you, it's hard to grab around and put a lot of pressure, so we're gonna look at this as an option, okay? Once we have them on the back, okay, with this, all right, so resist me, resist, okay? My hips are down, see my hips are down low, okay? My elbow's here, okay? Just, to, this is what, we'll look at holding the neck later. Right now we're, we're over the top and I'm on the hip, so move, move. So see what he's doing? Except, okay. I'm stepping out. This is the most basic and simple that we're doing today, okay? And if they want to keep their legs super locked on me, um, I have all kinds of ways to make them want to open the legs to stop me from, from going for a leg lock on my opponent, okay? So we have this idea where we can go here and here, which we can do, it's great. We also have the idea of going here and here. So now move me, move. It doesn't matter where his arm position is. See, it's heavy on my opponent. My hips are down. I'm not like this. There's a whole bunch of terms that I use with my students and my training partners. We're doing a few today. Another one is uh, my hips are not so high. We call that offensive hips. But right now, I'm in offensive hips. Because I can move, my center of gravity is right underneath my knees, okay? Uh, defensive hips is when I'm down like this. It's usually when you're trying to establish position or confirm a pass or make it hard for your opponent to move. I'm not as fast from here though. Okay? There's times you have to use both, the offensive and the defensive hips. And even though people don't, don't usually identify that those as two different positions or two different ways of using the hips, everyone uses both. Everyone does. In Brazil, it's very common. Defensive hips, hips down all the time. All the time. It's something that the Americans are doing real well now, but for, for a long time, that was where we lacked versus the Brazilians. They always had that the hips were down to the ground, very strong. It was very hard to move them. And that was old school, hardcore jiu-jitsu. Set up again. So we'll look at this. I don't necessarily grab first. I'm just gonna push him down, okay? So I'm just gonna be in, and I'm just on the hips. Let me see. You, you can hold the, the jacket or the belt or the pants, okay? And so just stay, move, move a little, move, okay? You're not really in a big rush, okay? Like I'm just down low, my hips are low. Okay, I'm not in a rush at all. When I get a chance, move a little bit. We're gonna kick, we're gonna kick our, kick our leg, and we're gonna pass. This way. So. And this is crudely basic. We're just starting here. So why am I not showing this? Why well, will? Okay. The reason I don't like to rely upon that is because the head and arm, as it's called, I need my opponent's head and arm. Some people are very stingy with the arms. So you reach for the head, this is a problem for me, okay? I will bait people like that. I'll say, grab my head, grab it. I won't say it subconsciously. I'll, I'll reach my head, I'll stick my head out. So when they reach, I'll get the arm. So though this happen, grab the arm. Yeah, see, this is a problem now. I got the head, but I didn't get the arm, and this can be used against me, okay? So, and some people will put your arm out a little bit. Yeah, you'll give that, but he won't get, no, tuck, tuck your head. Yeah, you see, now I'm like stuck. And there's some people don't hurt my shoulder, but they can actually get you in some crazy funky, uh, like Americana type type submissions from the bottom. There was a fight in the UFC, Frank Mir, uh, good headweight uh, practitioner, somebody I know for a long time. He got someone in this from a similar position, okay? So you gotta realize the head and arm, 
I need the head and arm, obviously. If you know that and understand that, that will be a huge advantage for you, okay? So truth be told, I push them down first, and then I get the head and the arm, this is fine, okay? And the other way around it is just to, well, not, not from here. First I'll push them down and I will get here. There's less, less to concern myself with, okay? Both are good, it's more personal preference. So I'll try a little bit. So now, we are gonna push them down again, but now we are gonna grab the head and the arm. Very important, when I do lock him on his back, the hand that's on the neck has to be on top. If it was the other way, it won't hold an opponent who can move very well. They will, they will squirm, uh, they will wiggle their neck, and they'll be able to escape pretty easy, okay? Or at least be able to give me a problem, okay? So we have the head and the arm, and I want to have this on top. Now, I want to turn his head this way with my shoulder, okay? It's uncomfortable. With this leg, I just come to the, the knee right there, okay? You'd be surprised at this point now, you can actually let your hands go and turn the head more. And see, the thing is, the opponent will actually, I can't say every time, the amount of nuisance you're giving to the head, the pain, the discomfort, they're distracted. They know, they know that the opponent is in their half guard, but they're more concerned with their neck and their face turning. And they can't even see what you're doing. They're just looking all this direction, okay? So if you look at his jaw, that's how you turn the neck on the jaw. You don't turn the neck on the neck, okay? It's like a hand over the jaw, you turn it. So you actually want to turn your opponent's face looking away from you, and you'll see they can't really have uh, the same, the same uh, power or ability to stop you now once their head is turned away, and it hurts, it's uncomfortable. If someone is very stubborn, they'll become less and less stubborn the longer you have this on someone, okay? I'm putting my shoulder straight to the jaw, th uh, through the jaw to the ground. It's very uncomfortable, okay? So you see, we're here. We have this option here. We can do this. There's things we can do. But I want to get the head and arm of my opponent, a little more old school, very effective. Arm, head. This is on top first, okay? Now some people teach just, just to grab this first. That's fine. I prefer to have the hands first. Once it's established, I can take my hand away, walk a little bit away. Now, take my shoulder a little higher, and I turn his jaw, okay? You see. Now the thing is, if he if he has a very strong uh, half guard, he's he's distracted. I'll take my left foot and just come here, and I'll be able, I'll be able to either turn this way, this way, or just take my leg out. Sometimes I can even mount my opponent. Many flashy ways and cool ways to pass half guard. I've seen guys that will stand up too early. I've seen guys that will go too low, different arm position. I'm not saying any of it wouldn't work. It could, and. Uh, maybe call me a little old-fashioned. Some of these old fundamental moves, they still work today. Of course, they might be a little bit different over time, they've changed, but still, I don't like to call them basic movements. It sounds too boring. Let's say fundamental. I mean, fundamental, old-school ways have uh, somewhat stood the test of time and they still work today. Let's look at one right now, light up, brother. So, one of my favorite side, once again, okay? Let's actually turn this one. Okay, because you see, half guard, okay? Now, if I had arm position, it's better. And plus, I still can turn their head. This is, let's turn it, let's go down a little bit. I mean, that's, that's, that's best, of course, right? So you can notice the turn, okay. But, let's say, we used to hear, okay, there's all, all, all kinds of things I could do with my arm. But let's say I put it back here. I'm gonna change now my arm position. Realize, this is, this is it depends on, on your coach or who, who's, who you learn from. Some will t tell you different things. I always learned, that if the opponent on top had my arm and had my head, well, I, will, I better be on their head first yeah. to stop them from smashing, okay? But if someone is over your head, you do not want this person having their arm out is dangerous. Matter of fact, that's a big mistake. He better hide his arm, yep. So, so the thing is, most, some people teach this, it's very common, okay? Or if he was here, some people teach that, old school, okay? Where the case is, I'm not going for the head, I'm just over and I'm putting my weight on my opponent, okay? Now, simple, okay? I'm turning down, hips down low. Uh, be aware that he can try to put me in full guard. I, I don't want that happening, so I'm very, very low. And look at my foot, I'm just walking this up to here. So even if he has very strong legs, uh, the, his legs are a little more suspended in the air, and then now we're in this 
uh, where I'm basically ma almost mounted on my opponent. Okay. So one more time, it's up here. Simply just, just, just having this ability to just, just have it to where he feels always suspended. Okay. One of my friends, Echo Charles, does this. He actually reaches down, grabs his foot, and pulls it up very fast. I don't know how he does it that that well. Okay. Old school is to just walk your toes up here like that. Take your elbow. Be aware, please. Boom. If someone tries it on me and they do this, big mistake. Take your right arm, reach up and grab my wrist. I, I'll wait for that. I'll actually, I'll actually, um, no, if they're going for this, I will wait for them to reach their hand and I will have the wrist and now I'll sweep them. So the bottom man now has an advantage on me since my arms were out really bad, okay? So be aware, please use your elbow, push it off. Now we're to this position where we're mounted with our legs stuck quarter guard whatever okay so it's just another option once again especially with someone who's very hard to grab the head and arm I can't get it look you can always just go here blocking hips down low walk your foot up sometimes it comes for already that's a big advantage if this happens but keep it real strong that happens walk it up right my foot's close to his body and we're just taking the elbow and just pushing it off that's all now from here we're going to go ahead and mount all right, we're gonna get under this far arm, this arm, different advantages, okay? That's best, okay? This is not what I would prefer, but some people teach this way. This is fine, okay? We're gonna now take our leg all the way across this way. And if you also very tight, I pull away, I, I sit through, through that direction. We just have to go over one that's somewhat fundamental or basic as you could say. So now after this we're going to go into um, the Z guard or the the knee shield. That'll be next. All right, knee shield or Z guard, whatever it's called. It, I understand it's it was always regarded as somewhat of a transitional position and most people didn't. The ones that used it before were either guys who weren't good I, let's see, generally speaking, it was like a position that had no, no future. But now it's different. Things have changed and people are using this, which is pretty cool. I mean, I've, I've had a few positions that I've used that, that people didn't think were effective and over time they became effective. So I can't discount it. It's just something that's interesting, right? The knee shield, Z guard, okay? It is a half guard, but it's a more longer range. It's frustrating, right? This happens. So realize if my opponent had his like there, it's, I'm gonna smash it easy and pass. Okay, he doesn't have the same power from it. Okay, if it's too long, of course I pass also. So there's a middle point, like an angry angle, where you're stuck here. And then you're stuck in this leg. This is key, by the way. This one, this one keeps you away, this leg, and this one keeps you anchored in from half guard or from the, the knee shield. Okay. Now what I see a lot of people do, we even experienced people, they push on this knee, and you think, oh, put your weight on your opponent is a good idea. Yes, that's true, but in this angle is not making him tired. He can hold a lot of weight here fine. I'm just reinforced, it's reinforced to the ground. So I'm actually pushing to the ground, okay? If I lean on him more, if that leg moves or he goes under me, I fall and I might be getting a leg lock or some kind of sweep, okay? If I fall away, he can sit up and he can do all kinds of things. So what should we do here, okay? One thing is, so so how would you, how would you be normally in the match? Yeah, see, the thing is, I don't want to be anchor on something, okay? I prefer to have this, just, it's, it's a frustrating thing for some that train, boop, boop. This is just damn frustrating when I have this, this sleeve. Even without gi, I've grabbed the wrist. It's a little more effective. This idea with gi is the whole weather. So I try to boop, boop. It just completely takes the wind out of sales for me, okay? It's frustrating. He, he really, he can do things to me if he sheds this grip. There's not much he can do when I have this. So that's one thing you can think about. And of course, for those who don't know, this is the better way to grab. You know, when I was young, the way they taught us was, the, was this way. Believe it or not, that's how people used to grab the key 25 years ago or so, okay? So this is fine. And I don't need to really pull it to myself too. It's just heavy off the ground. So train, move, move. It's just damn frustrating, okay? My posture's gonna be good. I'm not gonna be falling down on my neck, but he doesn't have much he can do from here, okay? Even from regular half guard, this is a pain, pain in the butt. If someone does this, okay? But this range is further away because it's shallow half guard. So this is something I like to do just, just for, the, for the time being. Now, so just train, train, train. 
So you see, this is also fine. High stood up, okay? When you stand up, make sure this foot is not close. There, please. That's what he wants. Okay. So we're, we're just holding here. This is fine. Okay, pull me down. Pull. Okay. Okay. Your posture has to be pretty good. Okay, it's good. And there's, there's specialists for this guard. You have to be very careful. And I suggest train more with those guys or those girls. Train more with them because it's a, a specialty position. You can learn a lot from someone if they have one move down very well. You can learn so fast. Okay. So we're here, this is across, so train, 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 train. I don't really want to be reaching out like this too much. He's inside, he has a big advantage on me. I'm in, I'm in some trouble right now, okay? Another thing I did was a mistake was I let him sit up, okay? So train, so if I have him down here, and I have his wrist, oh, okay. let's put him back here, his back. So this way, I, I did something a little different. I changed, um, I changed the distance, okay? So I tried to move, move. Now we're full guard, okay? So in this case, I like when someone puts me full guard because now I can attack both legs. But that's just me. Some of you might want to avoid that. But realize when someone uses the, the Z guard or the, or the uh, knee shield effectively, sometimes that's a special move. You want to avoid it, okay? Now we're good. Another, another school of thought. Start training, training. Okay. So, I don't want that happening. So watch this. We're just trying to do a reach, reach, reach in there. I don't want that happening, okay? So the best way to stop it is by doing this. The next way to stop it is by doing this. I could even, if I was bound this knee, I could go under his armpit, but right now I can't. So reach, reach my leg. You can even stop this. If you reach for the head, you use it. So go for it. If you reach for the head, usually he sweeps you. Okay? If he's good. So I prefer in this case to block the Go reach, reach. Take your leg away. Okay. You know who's the most famous in this position is Craig Jones from Australia. He's very good with this move. And that's one of the examples of, I mentioned I was talking about people have made this into a special position. I mean, if you get someone here, if I was that person, I would do anything to change the guard. It could be deep half guard, it could be full guard, it could be butterfly guard, okay? The, all these guards have different advantages and, and disadvantages, but I would just change it from that position. It's usually a position of weakness, he makes it a position of, of strength, okay? So we have the ability now, he's reaching, go, reach. We, have the, we can do this, okay? We can block the, the bicep, or we can have the, the sleeve. This is very important right here. It's a very tricky position, okay? And we'll look at a few other attacks when we come back next. All right, there is a way to, to actually do this and put my foot here. My foot's kind of hurt right now. So let's do something that's it's a different variation, but still back to the point of personal preference, okay? I need to have my height. This one's not functioning on me putting weight or smashing the leg down. Completely different way of doing it, okay? I want to hold. This is better with gi. Without gi, I have a way to jump, jumping in here and doing a, a good a, a series of foot lock, leg locks, okay? But what we're doing now is as I twist, I'm actually going to, Keep this down, okay? It's important that you see, just stay right there. It's good, stay relaxed. You see that I, I'm actually doing this, okay? And same time, I, I did push down. I, I confirm it to the ground more. I'm not really pushing, I just, I push off, okay? So you notice how I'm not really making a big level change, picking myself up too much. I'm just keeping, okay? So, so the thing is, this also can, against a good, a smart competitor who, who uses this guard, this might work only a few times because most people focus on this leg, they focus on this, that, and they forget about this. And also he does. This is, the, the, this is the leg that retains me in this position. This is the leg that supports my weight. So more people are worried about this and they forget about that bottom leg. And it's true, they'll get around this and then they'll think about that second leg. But what if you address that one first? So if you go for the attack train. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's hard to, I can disengage. I completely, now it's open guard standing. And that's really hard to stop. What I did right there is very hard to stop, okay? Oh, sorry about that. All right, so, so watch. It's literally, don't, don't make it a little, it's not just this. That's why we're using both knees. It's a strong, I exaggerated. It's a strong movement, okay? Strong, okay? And if we're leaning over, we can get swept, okay? I can't do this from here, okay? Here, 
So it is simple, okay? By the way, if their feet are crossed, put across your feet. That's a different situation, okay? Different, okay? If this happens, just because we don't have to, um, not waste, spend too much time going over this idea. If someone across their feet, it's usually, not always, usually easier to get around the knee, you get the deeper half guard. If someone can stop you with that, with their feet crossed, they usually have very, very long legs and that's their special style, which is, even amongst people who play this guard, the knee shield is very rare, okay? So, so cross your feet and keep, keep, yeah. It's hard for them to do that, okay? I can also, once again, I, I can smash that out, the, the first technique can smash that open, okay? So you're gonna find a few people that do that well, but it's rare, very rare, okay? Uh, so we have the way we can smash this down and sprawl away, but right now we have this, pull the sleeve, you can, you, can, you can stop them, but I want you to hold the pants and just boom, strong, and then you, you take your leg out, or a little more aggressive, you take it out, okay? And we're, we're already looking to go here. Now, if this knee is here still, he doesn't have the same ability, okay? He's just kind of like biding his time and holding, hoping, he doesn't have much of an offense here, unless he can grab this leg or something, okay? It's very hard, so grab this leg, grab, grab. It's very hard because that knee's blocking him now, you see? So turn a little bit. If I was here, grab a leg. Yeah, you can, okay? But if I was to get here, and get my knee here, so grab, grab it and go. That knee, it's very, by the way, I wouldn't just stay, I'll do something, I'll pass, okay? Uh, some people, they, they just, whatever. There's some, I don't like this submission personally, but you know, you know, I have options. He doesn't have much go train. Okay? That knee, that knee makes a, a pain in the ass for him, okay? So that's not your biggest concern. Your biggest concern is not doing anything and let them get under your leg and take you over. And we have a few more after this. So dealing with the Z guard, uh, knee shield type situation, it is something I've been asked a lot about recently. And it is probably because that individual Craig Jones, you'll see the future, not the future of the sport. He's currently doing great in the world, so I wish him the best. With that said, now let's look at actually passing or off, uh, launching an offense from this situation, from I'm on top, okay? Uh, by the way, when I was young, I didn't, I didn't use the Z guard specifically, but from half guard, I would flip around the same way that he does. So it's a, it's a dangerous thing to this opposite leg, okay? That's the priority, but you'd be surprised. I don't how, I have to know about that. This leg is usually what they're looking to attack, but I can't, uh, I can't dwell on that and just think my leg and get distracted, because I, I have a job to do, okay? So you see, I mentioned earlier that this is the knee that absorbs the pressure of my weight, and this is the leg, the bottom, that keeps me anchored in place, okay? So, so if you, we fight train, if, if I get his, his knee down, now he's like in a side saddle position, which is, um, I have a friend named Jocko, who does this, this situation right here, well, it's real hard to pass his guard still, okay? But most people, when you get their leg folded like this, it looks like someone's sitting sideways on a horse, okay, you call it side saddle. You really are not that strong. And now I'm not in a rush. And now maybe maybe Craig Jones can still attack someone, but most people are just stuck here and they're they're not moving anywhere. And the longer they hold here, they're getting more and more tired. And they're losing more of their confidence. Okay, so one more time. So it's literally it's it's I I have to take my chest, and put it down, and I try to reach to the back here and hold the material. Okay, if it was no gi, it's a little harder. It'll slip. Okay, but I hold the material here. Okay, now so train train now. Not a big deal. You see, see what I'm doing? This is defense. My hips are down. Defensive hips. No, don't, don't get silly and get you in a, a loop choke or a collar choke here, okay? I'm in a pass at the moment. I can pass left in the front or pass right in the back, either one, okay? I simply just, it's, you keep down, just keep myself slow, the pass, okay? Or I pass in the front, either one. This is the most consistent because, put your knee on. I'm not pushing either, which, which is what you were doing. Let's say I was watching. That's what I'm doing, okay? I change the, the direction of my weight is going from pushing there to going down. And I exaggerated a little bit. My arm position was not perfect there because I wanted to see that increment from pushing here to pushing down. But I have to get on top of the knee to push this down, see? So, push, push. Especially I push a little bit, you push it back, that's the best time to go, okay? So yes, yes, the, the mechanics is I'm pushing here and I change the, not trajectory, the direction of my weight is going straight down here. But to make that even more effective, I'll push extra and then I'll collapse it, okay? So 
it's not you can you can just push and do it, but they might react in time. So watch if I if I just see he'll react. Right, but give it a good push. Let's let it slip. Okay. You can change the direction of your chest or let it slip to your stomach. There's two different ways to do it. They're both similar. Preference. Okay. One is one is push and just just, just kind of move you to um, let it slip to your stomach. The other one is to actually move your chest down. Okay. They're so similar. It's almost maybe pointless describing it, but they are two uh, two slightly different ways. Okay. And once we get here, oh, I have the material. My head's not down, okay? I can now, turn this with a little, I'm here, okay? It's hard for him to hold me on that, that hook with the bottom leg. Hold, hold the, the, the gi, the kimono. And it's just simply just, just kind of jump around a few hops and you get here. If you're gonna go the other direction, okay? You have to get your leg out. You can take this foot, okay? The defensive hips, uh, me going from offense, Knees up, to, well, to feet out, hips down, defense. It's very important. When I say defensive hips, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm always defending because in that case I was attacking. The defensive hips really means to establish my, my control of my opponent, to make it harder to sweep me, to have less openings when I'm just so low to the ground so I can establish and assert my weight on my opponent faster. This is my favorite pass. This is what I use most, and there's more we'll do next. A lot of questions I get about deep half guard, shallow half guard, inverted half upside, whatever, whatever it is, okay? Of course, we'll do some knee shield or Z guard today as well. I want to show one thing, and I did mention this last time, I mentioned it today, I believe, but the reason I don't get a lot of people having a very tight, deep half guard game with me is because there's this imminent threat that their legs, I mean, their legs are connected to my legs by definition to be half guard. It's very easy for me to get their legs. I've, I beat some very respectable, uh, good opponents um, in, in the past because of this. So for me, it's more they're a little loose and keeping their guard away from me. So I, I'm not so connected to them. And that helps me to pass the guard. So we'll do that today. But first I'm gonna show you one of my, not trick, one of my great um, victories. I had probably, two, it was over 20 years ago. It was, I was a pur purple belt. And the light on, let's do that, deep half break. So I was here. Let's, let's turn this way over. A quick story time. So it was back in 1997. Yeah, I believe 1997. I was a purple belt, and I had I had two matches I won. I'm in the finals, it was three. I'm in the finals versus a, a, a Brazilian opponent who was very, very tough, very strong. And he was, he was breathing funny and staring me down, and I was like, you know, it's kind of, kind of the adrenaline was going in for this match. And he was so strong and, and swole, buff, you know, muscular, that I, I, you'll see in the end, well, you won't see in the match, he actually lost his energy just as so muscular of, of an opponent. But he, he won his first two or three matches easy too. So in the finals, I faced this guy, and he got up on me something like 8-0 fast, maybe 9, maybe 7, I forget. It's been a long time, okay? But I was literally down 7 or 8-0. He's just a very strong guy, surprised me, and, and he had his run going. I closed the gap to within one point. It took me four minutes or something. Five minutes, I forget. Uh, so I'm down eight, nine to eight or eight to seven. I'm down at one point. And he was like this. Now he's, he's tired now. He's actually tired, okay? And he had a triangle on his legs like this. Very tight, very strong. He was inside and he was just holding on. And the corner was saying, um, so, 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 they were saying, you have 20 seconds left. 20. I remember the word uh, Vinci, which means 20. You have 20. They were saying, hold on, you're going to win. I was like, I know he's strong, he's going to win. But I looked back, I saw his toes. I saw it right here. Okay? So the thing is, if this is not tight, I can pass. I can take my leg out and pass. Okay? So he was squeezing very strong and holding on with all, all might just to hold for 20 seconds to hold on to win. Okay? I look back at his toes, and this is something that nowadays is legal, I believe, a brown belt and black belt. In my opinion, people should learn this even before. And it's a little bit uh, like, a, like blasphemy for this, me to say that, but it's just how I feel, okay? I don't think people should start learning this at brown belt, okay? What happened was, I grabbed his foot, here, the toe hold. Now he's stuck in there, he cannot move or roll or anything, can I pull this way? And it's, it's, a, it's a very tight, simple to hold. So this is one example of being in a deep half guard where someone has the legs locked, it's fresh, it's hard to pass, but something is open. 
There's all kinds of abilities I have. I have for my knee lock, you know, going. And of course, without knee, I have the 411 situation. I can go to 50 50. Okay? I can even now pass it if they have the, the legs loose. Uh, so I have many options. Okay, the first thing I can't attack is the legs because the legs are connected to me. Okay, I'm gonna show it one time. So, so the guy was tired, he's holding on very tight, and he actually had arm position on me, but he was just holding on to me very strong. Uh, so I grab simple. Okay. What the told, I, I teach simple is this. That's not as good. It's okay. It's better to be over with two clamps. And I'm just kind of pulling his foot on the mat like a brush. Very tight. Okay. One detail can turn all the way around. Over there. One thing I've seen people teach this before. Put this up there. Look at my toes. I actually cross my toes like that, so try to reach my leg. Yeah, that's that's the reason. Okay. If I do this, he grabs my leg. Yeah, people can pull and maybe maybe hurt you. Okay. Yeah, he can go for my he can grab my my toe as well. Now I've seen people teach it like this. They'll actually roll over. Give me the total for the hip too. Look, why would, why, would, why would you do that? I mean, it looks pretty. I agree, it looks very pretty. You roll and you have the, but you're giving your opponent the toe hold at the same time. So I don't prefer to roll. Even though it looks nice, I want something that's more effective. I don't roll, I reach. I cross my feet, just like this, so they can't get me the toe back. And that's a good attack, surprise, and simple from half guard. From the top, I the one. You know, we saw last time I was here, I seen this one where I'm past the knee. I push this and I go over. I don't know, okay? And that does work. It's awesome. It's a very good move. And, and uh, before I show the, the two variations similar to that, the way you get good at doing that is you get your partner and you drill from there. You, you have them try to escape the knee lock. And you'll be surprised, they'll escape most of the time. But as long as you get back on top, it's like a free attack. And it's going to be a great weapon to have in your arsenal. From half guard, the other direction I can go, I have to be past the knee, not knee shield. This is this does not work for knee shield. Okay, I take the top um, sleeve, and I'm going to grab now in this way. This is how they, we used to hold back when I was like 19 or so. That's how people were, were holding the gi. They, they weren't doing this. Okay. You can hold like this, it's just hard to pivot on your fingers, okay? So you're going to hold like this, you're going to push it across his stomach, and you're going to step all the way around this. I'm keeping that pressure down on his hand. And now I have this to take to the knee. Same thing. Just fall down, you hold the toes, you put it in your ass, it's very tight, okay? 